Doomsday Clock Issue 11 sees the President give an order to launch the nukes as Batman stops the soldiers from firing the WMDs. Joker's gang war meanwhile erupts through the streets of Gotham as Alfred reads Rorschach's journal, learning of the end that came for his world. As Batman is overcome by the soldiers, Ozymandias watches all of the news talking about the disappearance of the Justice League and how they fled to Mars as Russia prepares to send heroes to America to arrest Superman. Batman is also in the news after the National Guard arrives in Gotham to arrest Batman for treason after his attack on American soldiers. Wonder Woman meanwhile deals with the Kandaki attack at the UN, but soon Black Adam proves too much for the princess as General Lane tells the president there are hundreds of metahumans gathered in Kandak, finding a safe haven there after the recent Superman theory controversy. With their nuclear defense systems down, they have no defense in place to deal with them, and on top of that, the Navy is watching for any signs of the Amazonians emerging from Themyscira. The Amazonians Meanwhile, no Diana will be seriously injured in her fights, and she will need aid. But they know retribution against Black Adam is not their way, and neither is saving the rest of the world. As Putin gives a deadline to the US to give up Superman, Lex and Lois return to his office. Lex said weeks ago he was approached by a man from another Earth, and was shot by someone from that same Earth as well. He tells Lois about Ozymandias and what he did on his world, and how it led to nuclear war. So he came to their world to find the one being who could save their world, Dr. Manhattan. Superman awakens in the Hall of Justice, calling for Lois as Perry and the other Daily Planet staff wonder what the hell is happening in the streets of Metropolis and where is Superman? The world begins falling apart with wars and natural disasters as the news calls for a hero to stop it all from falling apart. Ozymandias leaves his screens, going to see Saturn Girl, asking what she wants. Imra wants to know why she can't read his mind at all, while Lois meanwhile is taken to a high-tech vault that Lex says he has made to house the secrets of the very nature of their universe, all of which revolves around him. He talks about Carver Coleman, whom Lex has retrieved many of his things from over the past, like the photo of John. Lois wants to know what's so special about it, and Lex says that he's been tracking these strange anomalies since he was a boy, but the story behind the picture always eluded him. That is, until two years ago when he tracked a chronal energy spike and it led him to a park where he saw Flash meeting and remembering Wally West's Kid Flash, learning of the warning of an alternate reality. The Flash wasn't the source of the energy, the picture on the ground was. Lex says that he also found many chronal debris around the area, some of which he sent to Lois, like the JSA film, but the photo was the true anomaly. Lex reveals that he has many more pictures, and each is exactly identical to the one he gave Lois. Thanks to the picture and John's suit in it, he can determine that someone is traveling through time. Time, leaving these pictures as a sort of breadcrumb trail and whomever is doing it isn't aware that they are doing it. Dr. Manhattan meanwhile arrives back on Earth as Superman dresses, confronted by some soldiers who demand him to come with them by order of the president. Superman doesn't want any trouble as Saturn Girl says Superman will stop Adrian, but Superman doesn't even know he exists. He knows Imra came to the past to warn Superman about something she doesn't fully understand as Superman races away from the soldiers. Saturn Girl says that Adrian will never destroy Superman, but he's counting on the Man of Steel surviving whatever happens. Alfred meanwhile makes up some pancakes, bagging them up and heading out into Gotham where Reggie sleeps having a violent nightmare of his father's fiery death and how Rorschach is to blame. He awakens as Alfred arrives, saying that he read the journal and now he and Bruce believe him, and Bruce asked him to come find him. He offers the pancakes to the boy, but he hits them away, saying that they put him in prison and he is not Rorschach. Mime and Marionette meanwhile continue to kill their way through Gotham, as Adrian says his original plan was to convince John to return home and fix their world, but he knew John wouldn't listen to him, so he decided to use Mime and Marionette Marionette, pulling their strings, so to speak, to manipulate John before gathering the villains and breaking them out of prison with the help of Reggie before heading to the new Earth that John had been found on. Arriving on Earth Zero, Adrian realized John came somewhere special and horrifying, a world of extreme impossible, one full of hope and despair. Adrian says that the world was overrun with superpowers and costumes, and Manhattan refused to help them because of his pending confrontation with Superman that would either 
either destroy him or the universe. Adrian, however, knew why Manhattan came to Earth Zero, though, to be with his own kind. This caused Adrian to come up with a new plan, one to save both worlds. To begin, he would turn the world against Superman by discovering the Superman theory, which was partially true, beginning with Firestorm, so he manipulated the facts and caused Firestorm to be perceived as a threat, ultimately having Superman defend him in Moscow, and with the help of Babastis, his cat, he framed Firestorm with the murder of thousands. He made sure the heroes knew Firestorm wasn't behind it quickly though, turning them onto Manhattan's trail, which resulted in the removal of all of Superman's metahuman allies as they went to Mars. As the president is rushed to a safe place, Black Adam and his metahumans arrive on the White House lawn, where he tells the watching metahumans to join him and free the world. Superman arrives and Adam warns him to stand down. Saturn Girl says that the future exists because of Superman, but Adrian asks that if Superman is so important to her existence, then why doesn't Superman remember her? Saturn Girl begins to suddenly turn to dust, told by Adrian that she is no longer part of this timeline, and she didn't realise it until now, and now that she has, she is being erased. Saturn Girl disappears, leaving only her Legion flight ring as Ozymandias leaves, telling Johnny Thunder to stop crying since he's from the past, and the past won't be erased. Superman is smashed through some houses as Manhattan knows Clark will see him in five seconds. Getting out of the rubble, Superman sees Dr. Manhattan in the street, and the two stare at one another as they know it is time. Doomsday Clock issue 11 was another astonishing issue that finally put us in the endgame of this very, very overdrawn series. It's been two years since this book started, so reaching the ending is both a relief and kind of a sadness, because this book is really damn good. Despite the long delays, the book's quality has been consistent, and this issue was no different, with Ozymandias laying everything out about his plans and how everything ties into Rebirth, the new Legion book coming out, and everything in between. It's tied up so damn nicely as well, and makes total sense in the context of the story. The parts with Lex were really well done, and I enjoy how he thinks it's all about him yet again. That's just classic narcissistic Lex for you. The Saturn Girl story ending was really cool, and I was kind of shocked by it, and it completely sets up Bendis' new iteration perfectly. Her Legion never really existed, and this new Legion kind of takes its place. It's it's really interesting with the whole timeline thing. The ending with Superman facing down Dr. Manhattan is utterly surreal. I never would have thought that something like that would actually be happening. It's really cool, and I cannot wait to see what these two powerful beings do. I'm eager to finally read that last issue, and God forbid there aren't any more delays. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10.